What's up guys, it's me Janne here once again back with another video and this time I thought I'd show you guys how to shift without using the clutch pedal and uh, yeah, there's two ways. First way is to drive a car where you can shift like this. And by that I mean shifting by battles, I don't mean that you need to do that specific pattern to change gear just once. And uh, yeah, you don't need to use the clutch pedal since uh, it's the use of clutch pedal is automated and it's integrated to the process of shifting gears. And uh, the second way is to do some rev matching. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's not the best for your gearbox, but you can still do it, at least in Sims. And I've been able to do it on my dad's car and I hope he's not watching it since he might not like the fact that I've been raping his car's gearbox while practicing this. But uh, yeah, for rep matching, I need to show you guys some ex examples since I can't really explain it just by explaining. So uh, yeah, let's head over to Assetto Corsa and I'll show you guys how. All right, here we are at the pit lane now with a paddle car, a sequential gearbox, or actually, a, I think it's called a flappy paddle dual clutch gearbox or a seamless gearbox even meaning that I don't need to use the clutch myself as you can see the left uh, bar the blue one right now is not gonna show up at all when I'm shifting since you know the use of clutch is automated and I uh, usually in these sec uh, automated clutch systems the car cuts off the throttle itself so that you won't be giving too much throttle and uh, also when you're downshifting with these cars the cars the car will kick the revs back up since so that the revs match the upcoming gear as you could see probably from the bar, uh, pedal inputs let's see we go a bit higher into the revs and then when we go to the braking zone, I can have my left leg on the brake pedal, no issue whatsoever, since the car itself does all the all the blipping for me. But that's only in these automated clutch systems, and uh, yeah, you can't see the throttle cut off there, but uh, it is happening as well, so that the car won't over rev while shifting so basically when the car is that brief moment in on the neutral gear as you could see there the car doesn't rev itself to death when i'm switching gears and uh, now let's switch to uh h pattern car to see what kind of a role we do play ourselves when we are driving an h pattern car and we are shifting without a clutch. Here we are, the same track, a different car, this time an M3 E30 BMW, which has a H pattern and clutch gearbox, so pretty much the basic gearbox. And uh, yeah, clutch in, gear in, bit of throttle and clutch out, and off we go. And uh, there's pretty much only one main thing that you need to do when you're shifting without a clutch and that is rev matching and uh, in a way the electronic cutoff thing does it for you in the paddle shifter cars but here when we don't have paddles and we don't have any sort of automatic autom automation yeah automation on the shifting process apart from muscle memory we need to cut off the throttle ourselves because we will be going in neutral for a while when we're shifting clutchless so uh, yeah pretty much you need to know where the car, the car goes revs wise when you change from the limiter upwards towards the next gear and uh, 
on this car it seems that the limiter is somewhere close to 9k revs and when you shift you go to seven and a half and eight somewhere between there revs so when you're shifting clutchless you need to hit that precise spot in order to get the gear to go in uh, since the clutch isn't there interfering with the process you need to match the gears yourself instead of with the clutch you can just shift it as slowly as fastly as you want for example when we're near the 8 or 7k but then the gear just goes in regardless but when you're shifting clutchless you need to know how much you need to stay off the throttle on the neutral so that the revs will match in a way and uh, possibly there will be a cut since I've tried this quite a few times and I don't want to do this peak again so if this fails I'll be doing just a re-recording of the driving performance or shifting performance itself of shifting upward without clutch so what you need to remember is where to keep the revs and it's all about that really no clutch at all just watch for the uh, revs so that they will match and uh, yeah it's all about that learning that to what revs you need to let it cool sort of cool down otherwise you will get some gearbox damage as I just did but uh, yeah it's it's different from car to car so you need to learn it differently for each car and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for clutchless shifting but uh, it's not as fast or useful as you think it is you can upshift way faster with a clutch than without one and uh, you can be less considered about the revs as well so yeah when I upshift I usually use the clutch but the real reason I've learned clutchless shifting is because I was uh, an exclusive left foot breaker for quite a long time and uh, also I didn't at first have any shoes so heel and toe sucked for me it started hurting my feet really quickly so uh, when you're shifting down it's pretty much the same process you need to know that to what rev range you need to put the car in so it can shift down for example here we are bouncing from 7th to 8th and uh, I was watching too much of the rev meter to see the chicane coming up so fast but yeah, you need to do the same process but just different way you need to know how much you need to kick the clutch when you're shifting downwards I mean throttle I meant to say throttle please do not consider me to be a full-blown idiot I'm only like 50 percent or so it's all about getting into the right rev range we are now here at 4k I tried to ram in second it doesn't go but when I find that sweet spot it goes into second gear and uh, yeah that's pretty much all there is to clutchless shifting you need to know the rev ranges and uh, yeah here's the reason why I learned this because I was an exclusive left foot breaker I could use it like that and yeah there's a definite pro that you can break with your left since at least for me the left is a way more delicate breaking feet foot than the right one and also it's easier to just match the revs instead of having to heel and toe all the way down I mean 
that's not fun for a long time especially not without shoes it's horrible but yeah I do have shoes now but I was just too wear lazy to wear them for this one and I wanted to show off my cool socks as well but yeah pretty much just left on the brake and always when you're downshifting blip on the throttle just like the electronic blipper was doing it on the paddles so when you're in that short period of being in neutral between gears be, during the shifts then you can quickly blip the throttle and match the revs by that and yeah just like with the upshifts uh, also with the downshifts different cars are very different as we can see here this one favors low, lower revs compared to some other cars where you need to really uh, smash the throttle every time when you're shifting downwards and uh, yeah that's pretty much all I have to say about clutchless shifting and uh, it's difficult at first but easy when you get it and uh, it's a bit of a muscle memory thing with each car being st different from another so uh, yeah it's all about practice really but I hope I was able to explain it a bit I'm really shitty at explaining things that I do with muscle memory that I don't need to pay attention to when I'm doing it so uh, yeah I hope that this was at least somewhat worthy of a video for you guys instead of just being boring bullshit video but uh, yeah that's pretty much all you need to know about clutchless shifting and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I can tell you and show you about clutchless shifting. And uh, yeah, I'd like to point out that it's more of a hot lap type of thing than a race type of thing. I mean, yeah, it doesn't take much of an error to start slowly fucking up the gearbox. And uh, it is quite a snowball effect when it gets going. So uh, yeah, for races, I'd maybe recommend sticking to the clutch even on the downshifts, even though it might make you like a 0 0.01 seconds per lap slower, but making it to the end, it's worth it. But uh, yeah, that's that's really possible to break the car with it. And uh, yeah, don't worry about if if you happen to break it. I mean, I have I broke a car during the rally car series in Assetto Corsa when I was trying to go clutchless throughout the race it was a BMW M3 E30 the Group A version not the DTM version but uh, yeah and I had already pretty much learned the technique quite well at that point so uh, yeah just during races please stick to the clutch including shifting if you're driving an edge pattern if you're driving paddles then fucking who cares but uh, yeah that's all for now i hope that this was at least somewhat useful and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed i liked making this video and uh i'll see you guys next time and uh, yeah that's pretty much it thanks for watching bye oh and uh yeah i'd i wouldn't mind if someone wants to sponsor me another webcam so i could put pedal cam on all my streams that'd be all